Hello you viewers welcome to my show Rocket Monday in today's episode we're going to take a look at space stations so let's dive right into it so what it is it's a basically upgraded version of a rocket basically rocket allows you to go to space this allows you to stay in space it's a basically permanent settlement in space now permanent is relative per compared to rocket it's not permanent compared to a building or compared to a like you know a city it's permanent in terms of a rocket like comparison is against a rocket rocket will remain in orbit for best best case scenario like 8 days or 10 days this can stay up there for years now generally they try to make it as self sufficient as possible as in it should not need things from uh, earth to run but generally they have very little or uh, you know to no self sufficiency in terms of our space station you can recycle the water recycle the air but you cannot recycle the food so and is generally built close enough to any celestial body it's never uh, created in such a way that it is completely you know uh, out of touch with uh, everything as in like you will not put it in a lagrange point from uh, uh, of mars or things of that nature it has to be close enough so it can be supplied quickly because i already mentioned they don't have self reliance now generally the uh, crew size that we are talking about practically realistically speaking it starts from 3 goes upwards of 14 and 15 so small kind of crew like uh, russian uh, capsules generally take 3 and uh, shuttle can take more so this is the idea of it then why the heck we take it if it's not that magical if we can't live there permanently if it does not have self sufficiency why the heck do we bother with this one simple reason we have to understand effect of zero g on human body basically what does space itself do to you once you are outside of earth so there is no uh, alternative for that you have to go there like uh, no amount of r&d would have taught us that people cannot sleep in space properly simply because if they close their eyes cosmic radiation that is going by simply will uh, interact with their retina and give them flashes of light and it was uh, hap- it happened in moon mission also but because there were only three people who were experiencing that they simply decided to not talk about it because like it sounded crazy it's like you know when i'm closing my eyes and seeing uh, seeing basically stars but enough people in iss started to complain about it then this became apparent like and you can't shield against cosmic radiation basically so unless we had gone there we had no idea of this so we need to know we need to have like hands on experience about this now it's not a scientific challenge it's not like science is telling you you can't do this but it is an engineering challenge like uh, scientists did their job they will tell you what to do now engineers have to figure out how to build it so it is a engineering challenge on a level that humanity must master before becoming a space faring civilization and it's a very simple if you uh, if you want to do anything serious or practical in term, in space in long term you have to have this as a stepping stone this will teach you a lot and uh, in space when people uh, like uh, astronauts that went to the moon they did not stay there for long like there is a cumulative effect of uh, radiation cumulative effect of cosmic radiations and uh, uh, zero gravity that you can only study once you allow somebody to stand there for very long time as in more than a year so this is what happens when you come back from uh, zero gravity you can't walk uh, on earth and your heart actually becomes more like a sphere simply because gravity is not held keeping in shape Uh, people lose their eye as in like eyesight worse it does not uh, it does not go that bad that you will go blind but you will lose uh, basically precision of your eyes and uh, other things also but we have to be there in order to study it there is no way around it you have to be there to study it so far nobody has figured out how do we have sex in space and i'm quite confused by that is like you already have a permanent habitat you already know you cannot sleep have sex like figure things out like wh- why like do you want humanity to become a space faring because if we truly want to do that somebody has to figure out oh, what kind of uh, dynamics happen in that now childbirth is also easier to test here simply because if things go wrong uh, the nearest station is like you know just few minutes below not like 2 years so for in case of mars or 3 days in case of moon so people have to do that here i, I have no idea why they are not doing it now uh, before we talk about space stations we have to talk about mir space station because this is the fundamental space station that changed everything now many of you are familiar during the space era everybody kind of accepted that soviet unions were ahead it's just that their politics got better of them 
so why do people say that even though they lost the space race why the heck people say that simply because they figured this out this was the first modular space station and this happened after uh, basically moon mission so uh, under no circumstances uh, soviet union was beat but at that time they were going bankrupt so soviet union was dissolved russia took over this space program and it was it operated from 1986 to 2001 and the fact about this is like it worked like it wasn't pretty it, it wasn't like you know very pleasant to be in, stay in there but it worked nobody died on it and it uh, stayed there did it mission and uh, they targeted it for 15 year stay but it did upwards of 12.5 years not 15 whole years like they had to abandon it afterwards because like this was the first time like we didn't had any idea how the heck things will work out so this was the first time we figured out how do we actually build a space station in space so what about ISS? Now, many of you are familiar with the fact that ISS was a multinational collaboration. No single country can afford to build something this massive. Not America, not Russia, not China. Nobody can do this. To pull this off, like uh, there were two big partners, that's in Russia and America. Then uh, budgetary help was done by European Union. Then some extra help was done by other countries, like uh, primary being Japan. So this taught humanity how to work together not trying to kill each other how to work in uh, sync and make sure all the things work with uh, you know each other because many modules are from different places like one module is from uh, european union another module is from america another module is from russia another module is from japan how do you make sure these things work together without you know exploding so it was a very good exercise in humanities to like you know actually come together and b figure something out now be mindful it is multiple times bigger than a mere space station and that's why i'm giving you that space shuttle as a comparison so the pressurized volume in this puppy is qu quite huge now compared to mere it's not multiple times don't expect it to be like 50 times bigger than mere it's only few times bigger than that and it's always meant now this is crucial uh, international space station barring any accident generally is always meant and what i'm saying about barring accident is that recent so uh, soviet mission uh, failed uh, the crews were ejected so in those sort of scenarios there is a probability if the next mission cannot be done with, within the operational window uh, iss can be abandoned now that can be bad but uh, that would be the only time since its uh, inception that it would be completely unmanned is generally there is always somebody here sometimes three people sometimes five people People, sometimes seven people but 24 into 7 somebody is always there maintaining it uh, doing research and projects of that nature now people hated international space station and i want to give you a very simple context of it the reason for that is i uh, basically mere space station taught us um, almost half of the, what we know about uh, long-term staying zero gravity so we figured it out that we're gonna die the, uh, that's the only thing we figured it out like we're gonna die and uh, the amount of money America spent doing this was uh, more than enough to build large hadron collider in America, which they already started to build, which they already were uh, gonna make, which was bigger than what we have. As in LHC, large hadron collider that is in operation today, they already dug the tunnel, which was bigger than LHC. So the funding was cut from LHC, uh, basically hadron collider that America could have built to this. So many scientists uh, kind of you know got pissed off about it, and it makes sense though. So. And the about research here well it only gave out one thing that people gonna die in zero gravity that's the only thing it practically taught us and all this idea that we can do space manufacturing nothing uh, in 20 years has come out like that is you can say tangibly okay this is worth doing in space only thing uh, that recently came out as in when i'm talking about recently as in barely two or three years ago and it's still being in development phase is that we can make optical fiber uh, which does not have crystals in it so that way that optical fiber is very advanced to give you a context it's like uh, comparing earth-based optical fiber that is manufactured on earth it's like a horse cart compared to what is made on iss like one to 1.6 kilometer was made uh, using 3d printer in space that can transmit much more data that would be like comparing ferrari to a horse cart so there is that's the only thing tangibly we figured out now was it justified to spend like 400 billion dollar to figure that out no and you know there is a lot of bureaucracy involved into this so it is not very efficient 
And that's why many people don't like ISS because physics wise it, it did not teach us new things which uh, Large Hadron Collider did teach us and in terms of space it only gave us little bit of improvement it's not like a moon program where you know every day new research is happening this is like you know we're gonna polish it a little better that and this it's not giving us like you know 400 billion dollar went inside and 500 billion dollar came out it's like 400 and yeah we may in next 10 years start to use uh, optical fiber that is made in space it does have tangible benefit but it's not justifiable so that's why many people hate ISS so what we can expect in the future now first uh, in the future the biggest uh, space station that is uh, right now uh, you know nearing completion is lob G you can check my video here and uh, lob G is basically instead of being in low earth orbit it's gonna be on lunar orbit basically it's gonna be uh, spinning around the moon you can check that video for further description be mindful this will not be 24 into 7 manned they are not targeting that for this so people will come there uh, to study long term st uh, long term stay is in this context is only for a few days to few months don't expect that to be 24 into 7 manned so that's the lob G so you might be like okay isn't lob G smaller than ISS yes it's very small and uh, it's not spinning also so that's why like lob G is also people are like why just directly go to the moon and check that video for further detail it's just that it's not as good as it should be and then we talk about uh, the only another candidate country wise that is trying to build something is China which is uh, building its large modular space station now that uh, many rumors are coming out that it will be bigger than that but practically speaking it can't be no single country can afford that nothing like you might have to divert whole of your GDP to make that possible so practically speaking they can't do that and uh, the it is China so the information on this is kind of sketchy so they are trying to make something like this but it will be big it will be bigger than Mir but it will be lower than ISS so that's in progress now many of you will be like okay what about private space systems there are many 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 space tourism concepts and things of that nature however I I cannot put my money on it basically it's uh, you know very uh, pipe dream kind of feel to it it's like we're gonna make a station and then tourists gonna go it's like what is your ticket cost like what is your ticket spot and if two people started doing that both of them will be screwed because uh, they both uh, the to make sure they get their money worth enough tourist has to go there and to make sure that there is no competition you have to do that because if you start competing at that early stage both of them will uh, you know run out of money so and there are some interesting concepts that can have multiple layers of advantage like uh, this I, I practically like the idea I will link the description down below it's a deep space gateway basically deep space I'm guessing it's not like a lunar orbit basically it's a spinning habitat now the benefit of that it's gonna spin slowly so it has inner ring uh, that is gonna spin at the same rate that it will give you gravity that is equal to a uh, moon gravity lunar gravity and there is an outer ring that will be constructed afterwards that will give us mo uh, Mars gravity benefit of that is like we will figure out is lunar gravity enough for humans for long term yes or no how do we gonna do the training we can do the training here Mars mission this is absolutely key so that may actually get constructed because it has multiple advantages other uh, space concepts that I've seen is like basically tourism that's not big enough so in the future lob G is guaranteed to be uh, you know to be built uh, Chinese space station will be built sooner or later and uh, private space station let's see so this was my presentation on space station hopefully you uh, after this video you would have understand why we had to do it and uh, i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment uh, on my video uh, what you want to see in the next rocket monday episode and please share amongst your friend hashtag s2t and uh, subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching